I'm Andrew from Mechanical Service One, and today I will show you how to work with soft copper pipe. In HVAC, there's several different types of pipe that you might want to use or need to use, like PVC, PVE, PEX, or burnt iron, or in this case, copper. So, copper is one of the easiest to work with because it's softer and it's just less labor intensive and it's much softer to use and cheaper. So you have to uh, first start by getting a tube cutter, and when you cut it, there's gonna have it's gonna have burrs on the inside. And you can use a reamer like this, or in this case, on the side of the cutter, you have one like this. Or you can use the uh, emery paper, which is kind of like sandpaper. So this is a is a rigid, tiny cutter for half inch pipe or half inch, quarter inch, or anything smaller than that. So. I'm going to use about a couple inches of pipe right there, tighten it, but you don't want it too. Alright, here using the tube cutter from Rigid, and when you're cutting this, you don't want to do it a little, you don't want to do it too tight because it is soft, so it would be easier to bend it or kink it and it would be ruined or just it can cause leaks. So once you're doing it, you want to do about like a one eighth of a turn, and then turn it whichever way you prefer, and then you keep tightening it a little bit as you go around, because the blade will actually sink in and start to cut it. You can go around as many times as you want, but make sure you're turning it as you slowly go around, because that can really get the, the indent in it. But you don't want to do it too tight, because it will it will dent the, type, the pipe and give it that little oval shape that you don't want on there. So you have to make sure it's consistent and you keep going. Make sure, see I, when I do, I usually check back and look at it, not doing it too fast. Right now this is already kind of tight, so I, I can just keep going until I feel like it's loosening up. Once it feels loose, tight it again, one eighth of a turn. Not too hard, if you do too hard, you can bend the pipe and you don't want that. Tighter, keep going. This takes a while because this is a smaller cutter, but. And you can kind of see when it's almost falling off, and then just like that, it's gone. All right, so we're gonna be measuring the pipe, and we have we want a four-inch measure, and this can really be, you know, if it's your customer that wants a certain amount of pipe, or if it's whatever you need, and you buy them from the, the line sets, and you need a certain amount of pipe, you have to cut it off to get the right piece. So cut it, mark four inches on it and make sure it's right. You get the cutter, put it on there. Try to adjust it to four inches or you know the right spot to the best of your ability. And you want to tighten it but not too hard. If you if you see it sinking into the pipe you've gone too far. So for this one since it's the bigger cutter you want to actually hold it and you put it on there just to make sure it doesn't fall through. So once it's on there, you want to kind of hold the whole thing so it doesn't slip through, tighten it a little bit more, and then just go around. Tighten it one eighth, go around, one eighth, go around, just like that. Not too hard though, because you might dent it or kink it or make an oval shape type thing. You don't want that on your pipe, so. Around. But I usually I usually twist it until it feels smoother and I twist it again one more time for it to fall off. And so just like that. Now what you want to do is keep going here. I'm gonna mark four and a half. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna get this on here. Four and a half. What I usually do, I usually scratch the ruler too, just to make sure I'm hitting it right. It's lined up so I won't mess up. So I'm gonna use a smaller cutter since this is a this is a uh, quarter inch pipe. So I'm gonna use a smaller cutter on here. You wanna 
tighten that right on the line in the center. Nowhere less. Not too tight. It's not squeezing it. That first. Tighten it a little bit. The smaller one is harder to use because the blade is smaller, which means you have to put more pressure on it as you're turning, and it will take a little bit longer. So, in a way, the smaller one is more labor intensive, but if you want it to come out right, it would make more sense if you use a smaller cutter for the smaller pipe. That cutter is, the big cut, the bigger cutter is fine, but this one leaves you with more exact cuts and less burrs on the end when you cut it, so. so as you can see, there's like little indents on it. That's exactly what it should look like pipe is it's kind of shaving away at the middle and you'll know when you're almost done because it gets a little bit looser on the blade. It's four and a half inch. Now next we're going to do eight inches and this I want to straighten out the pipe a little bit. It's easier to work with. Eight inches. It's very important that when you when you mark this you have to get it exactly on. You need eight inches. That's exactly what you get. So now here's the trick. Because I have more pipe, I'm gonna need the, the bigger cutter because the more space to cover and it will go by much faster. So I said before, if you use the smaller one, you avoid getting burrs and you can easily you can easily get rid of burrs using, using this tool right here. Gets rid of burrs and burr deburr or reamers can come in different shapes and sizes really. It can be like this or it can be like a sharp one like this. And some cutters have a two-in-one where it's a, a deburr and a reamer. But you just need to find the right one. Just like this. Make sure it's tight on there. Around. You have to have a steady grip on the pipe rolls, it's just going to roll and then bend it. And you don't want it to do that. So just keep going until it feels a little loose to you. And tighten it a little bit and just repeat. For, for the bigger cutters that the sides of this by the rules could possibly bend it like not bend it but bend it in a way because it's going different ways so you have to be very careful with that to make sure it's on there because you don't want it to bend when you're working in someone's house so there you go it's eight inches now we're gonna do 12 and need more pipe right make sure it's like that see usually the pipe shouldn't be this bent and if it is it probably can't be worked with which means the pipe is the pipe is kinked or you can't use it you can't use because if a pipe has too much pressure going on it or it's dented it can't be used in someone's gas line or else it will it will break or you have refrigerant leaks or even oil leaks and if you have a refrigerant leak that's not good and you have it all over the place and you have to get the pipe replaced so to make sure you did it, did it right the first time make sure there are no leaks because nobody likes the leaks okay go around do it as you're going around tighten it a little bit 
Uh, when I do this, I look at look at it, check, take a quick look, check, just keep going. Be careful when you're tightening it because you can, you can bend it while crush it while uh, cutting. It. And there you go. Four and a half, eight, and twelve right here. After you cut your pipe, what you want to do is you can deburr it or ream it. Reaming is when you clean out the burr from the inside so it's it's smoother when you when you put the, the pipe in place because if you don't deburr it, it's going to cause leaks or restrict gas flow. There's many different types of reamers. You can use this one which is much more easier to use and then something like this. This is, you kind of have to use both because even when you ream it sometimes, there's still metal shavings on the side. So you want to take this and go back over them and make sure those are off. So when you get all those off, you want to make sure there's nothing wrong with your, with your verse. For copper tubing, there are many types of fitting. So same thing with wrought iron. For, depends on the size of the pipe. You want to use the same amount because when you swage it, it's the same size of the pipe. So here we have the, the L fitting and then a T fitting, and these are, as you can kind of see, these are these are swaged uh, swage already. So you can just fit your pipe in it. So all you have to do is swage your actual pipe. The T fittings are basically the same on the inside. All you have to do is just put the pipe in from any way, and then you could just fit it perfectly. Working on a job, sometimes you might need to bend a pipe to a certain place, or if you're in a rough spot, you're gonna have to be defended. Um, tube benders can come in a, a lot of ways, like this, or some some tube benders take like an arc shape, and you have to actually clamp it yourself. But this is what I like to call a simple tube bender because it's easy. You just put the tube in, and then since copper is soft tube, you kind of just take this and stretch it really. Until you feel that like you realize that you need to anymore. take it out, it'll just be that perfect shape that you need to. When assembling pipe, you have to put the fittings together with some of the with the pieces. So you got to start here. Make sure it's secured because after after you secure the pipe, you're gonna solder the bridge. Put put them together, and it will make the uh, putting the fittings together actually easier. If it if it doesn't fit at first, or if it falls out, that's completely fine because you will solder it at the end. So once you solder it, you'll see how well everything fits. When you suede, you kind of just put it together to see how well it fits, how well everything fits. Sometimes you have to flip it around, to try to make it fit because. It really depends on the, the structure of the pipe or the, the way how it bends. But make sure it's in, secure it kind of. So, something like that. And the most important thing is connecting it with an L or a T because if it's connected without the L or the T then there's a chance that it won't even won't even connect. So you just you need those parts to begin with. together. And just like that, pipe is assembled. Ooh. So when you're finished cutting a pipe, you're going to want to smoothen it out or get rid of the burrs and you can use a burr, one of these, or a reaming tool, like this, but or you use emery cloth. So this is, it has the same consistency of sandpaper. And what you want to do is you want to like kind of fold it in a way at the end of the tail right there, and then get it in there and then do that. Because what you're doing is you're getting rid of all the excess and the burrs and making sure that it's, that it's clean on the inside. Do a little blow, make sure there's no excess copper dust. 
when you put that in a pipe, that's one of it's going to be important. When you put that in a pipe setting, you don't want that in inside your pipe. So get that in there. Now what I like what I like to do is I like to take the cutter or this deburr tool, go around it one more time just to make sure there's nothing excess left in it right here. Just like that. Done. So now that our copper is cut and swage, we can uh, put everything together. So you want to take a couple of your fittings, make sure you kind of look at them, make sure you need what you need. Some guys usually just realize it off the bat, you know, just uh, recognize what you need. So just take the T first in there and make sure, as I said before, if it doesn't go right in, don't worry about it. That's completely fine. This piece right here. And so this one. Get this here. And then this pipe might have been a little too long. Get in like that. Still a little long, but. Wait, hold on. I need to restart this because I think I. Right here. Wrong one. Now we have to reassemble, reassemble it, which is what I did. I put the L fitting right here, and then the T one, while it's swage and cut, put it right here. I had to bend the pipe with, bend the pipe with the T bender. Here. And I put a pipe together.